Looks like I'm standing next to a standard panel in a home, right? I am. This is just a normal panel in a house, but I have something different at my house. This is a transfer box. What does a transfer box do, you might ask? Well, we've had recent power failures in Texas in the last two and three years, more and more often. With the storms we've been having, uh, the gross amount of people moving in, it is causing a lot of havoc on the grid. And so we're trying to prepare for that. And most people, when the power goes off, they go, I'm done with this. I'm going to go get an estimate to have a full home generator installed. They go out to get the estimate. They realize five, ten, sometimes twenty thousand dollars to have that done. Uh, at my house, I've done it for twenty-one hundred dollars. I'm going to explain how I do that to you right now. So first thing, of course, is a generator. I bought my generator for eleven hundred dollars. I bought it brand new. It runs on gasoline, it runs on propane. We have 8,000 watts continuous. I can power 80% of my home on this generator. I can power my HVAC system, heating, air conditioning, either side of it. I can power my entire kitchen, stove, oven, everything. I can do all that off of this, run, watch TV, everything. Um, my house is 1,800 square feet, three bedroom, two bath, nothing huge, but uh, with an even lar larger version of this for $1,500, you could do a lot more. So you obviously know there's gonna be these 110 outlets on it. You could go around and start plugging things in with the refrigerator and everything else, but get a transfer box. So this was $1,100, transfer box. Any electrician will install one. They're relatively inexpensive. I did mine for, I believe I paid right around $1,000 to have this installed. So this is a transfer box, and the transfer box is connected directly to the panel. Line power comes through. We have these switches that say line off generator, right? We have circuit breakers for the transfer box. We have our circuit breakers for the home here. So we have it labeled here. This is garage number eight, or uh, J. So we go over here. You'll see that the garage lights will turn off in the background. So those are off. If I was hooked up to generated power, they would go from line to off to generated power. So how do we get the generated power to here without running just a whole bunch of little switches? You see this big plug right here. So let me show you that. Get my specs set up on the tripod. Right here, we have a gigantic plug. This plug right here is the same plug that you would hook up your RV to an RV park with. It works in the same capacity to provide power to your home. So I have that transfer box that has all the power running through that transfer box that I want. My garage, so I can open the garage door in a storm. My internet, TV, the most important things, right? Heating, air conditioning, kitchen, all the things we need, our bedroom, our bathroom, it's all on there. I just take this, I leave this in the shed in the backyard. When the power goes out, I can pull it out, fire it up. I take this right here, I plug it in there. And I just come over here, it's keyed, so it can only go in one way. Plug it in, twist it, turn it on, and start flicking everything from line to generated power. This right here has a 10 gallon fuel tank on it. I can power my house for about 11 or 12 hours on a 10 gallon tank. This is a safety can filled with fuel, and this is stable fuel. So it also runs on propane if I need to. Stable fuel, keeps fuel fresh for a long time. I put this in the same stuff that I put in a lawnmower. I put it in this can. This can could sit for two years uh, with this in it and the fuel won't go bad. It can sit for quite a lot longer, but two years is the shelf life on it. That's what they tell you. And a safety can is very important. This is, this is a certified safety can. It doesn't leak when you tip it. Nothing comes out, even when the vapors come out. Uh, you pull this back, funnel sits on it. And you can fill this up. I have several of these that I keep handy in the shed when I need them. I can fill up garden equipment if I need them. And then about every six months, and sometimes if, I like, if I'm lazy about it, every year, I'll come out here, make sure this thing will start up, hook it up, uh, run the entire house for about an hour on the fuel that's inside here, so try and cycle some fuel through it. I have a welder that I'll hook up to this just to make sure it goes running through it, check the oil, check everything on it to make sure it's right. But for $2,100, I can keep my house going in the worst of storms and it's a, it's a big, big safety thing that keeps us, uh, in my opinion, much safer. The only problem with it is it is significantly louder than a standard home generator. I don't really mind the noise if I have power. Problem is, 
Every single one of my neighbors hears it running and they know that my house has power and theirs doesn't. So whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but I'll take the noise over it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll try and answer them or email me directly. Thanks, guys.